Durability is a property of a database that guarantees that completed updates will not be lost if a system crashes. In general, when you ask a database to store data, they write that data to a form of persistent storage like a disk drive. It's called persistent because once the data is written, the system could crash or even suffer a power outage and the data will be safe. However, some databases will delay writing to persistent storage until later so that they can write several updates in one batch. For example, if I ask the database to write data 1, then data 2, it might hang onto them in memory for a bit and then write them as one batch later. This technique, called batching, increases performance. However, if the database has data that hasn't yet been written and there's a power outage, that data is lost. These databases do not have durability. If the database doesn't use batching and writes to persistent storage on every request, is it durable? Not quite. Persistent storage has actually three different components, the operating system, the disk drive controller, and the actual physical atoms and electrons used for storage. The operating system and disk drive controller also perform batching for performance improvements. In a power outage, data queued for batching at the operating system or disk layer will also be lost because it didn't make it to the actual atoms and electrons. To avoid batching, it's possible to tell the operating system and disk drive controller to write everything currently queued, which is called flushing, a database with durability both executes a write to the disk drive on every update and tells the disk drive to flush the write. In summary, a database is considered to have durability if it can guarantee that whenever you ask it to write something, that when it says, I'm done writing, the data is encoded in real physical atoms and electrons. The downside of this is that forcing and physical write for every update makes updates slower, so there is a trade-off between durability and performance. For the final bit, let's look at Redis, a database with configurable durability policies. There's a handy post on their site about persistence, and the link is in the video description. Looks like Redis has three kinds of durability. Let's cover the third one, then the first one, then the second one, so it's in order of complexity. The third one is no persistence. When the database process exits, or if there's a power outage, all data is lost. That's easy enough to understand. This could be useful if your application is okay with all data being wiped at any moment, like a short-lived cache. Next, we have RDB, which provides point-in-time snapshots. In other words, every n seconds, it saves all the data in the database to disk. If you have a power outage, you'll lose all the data since the last save, which will be at most n seconds ago. This doesn't meet the criteria for durability, but it shows the trade-off between persistence and performance. If you save more often, you lose less data, but you have to spend more time saving. And the last one is AOF, which records every write as soon as it's received. Since it records every write, is it durable? It depends on the flush policy, which we can see if we scroll down. Redis uses the term fsync, short for file system sync, as a synonym for flushing. There are three options here. The first is always, which flushes on every write. This is durable, but as the post notes, it's very slow. The second option is every second, which is not durable, but provides at most one second of data loss, similar to the previous approach saving every one second. And the last doesn't explicitly flush and leaves it up to the operating system to organically decide when to write to disk. Which settings are best is up to you, the application developer, to decide based on what you're using the technology for.